What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to The Madness. Today we're gonna to be talking about whether or not the pedal boards and the FX pedals that we know are eventually gonna be a relic of the past. Will these things actually stand the test of time into the next, you know, decade or so? It seems more and more likely like we're gonna have a balance, right? But more so towards modeling and digital effects. Because as we've seen from companies like Fractal Audio, uh, Helix, and Kemper, you know, all those devices can basically replicate everything that we've loved in, in the analog realm. And they've brought it into a smaller form factor, lighter weight, and honestly more capable, maybe not in the perfect replication of the sound, but enough to get enough, you know, under your belt to really kind of tinker with it and get it going. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna be talking about whether or not these things are just gonna be kind of obliterated by the modern day digital realm and how far and how amazing the technology has become over the past half decade. Ever wonder where these picks go? I'll show you. I initially started off using, obviously, in my past, you know, there was no real modelers. You know, the first ones that I really saw were like the Line 6 Spider and, uh, you know, the, the Katana and stuff like that. The, those were back in like 2000 and like 7, 2008 when I first started seeing my first modelers. And to be fair, they sounded like garbage, which is why they probably didn't really take off until, you know, the later half of the 2010 to 2020 decade. I mean, what I used to have was I had a orange TC30, you know, and uh, that was a really great tube amp and I had a pedal train with a whole bunch of different pedals but I tried to keep my pedal board relatively minimalist you know just because I didn't want to have to stomp on a bunch of pedals when I was playing out eventually I just kind of sold everything though I got the fractal audio xfx3 and I haven't looked back really you know because I can tinker with this thing and really modify the blocks as much as I want to and make it sound essentially the same thing as a as all of the pedals that I you know grew up and loved so there's no real loss aside from just having to dial in those specific blocks in order to get the pedal sounds that I wanted you know, from back then. So if I wanted to replicate the sounds that I've got from back on my tube amp, it takes a bit of effort instead of just plugging in, turning a couple dials and getting a sound that you really want. Yeah, there's more effort to go into it, but then once you get it, you just save it off and then you keep it for the rest of your life. The problem really is, is that every time a pedal comes out, you're not really able to expand your real estate of your pedal board, right? And with an Axe FX, you basically get all of the pedals in a very small form factor. And you don't have to worry about buying new ones because updates are constantly coming out. You know, same thing with Helix, same thing with Kemper. I feel that, you know, while it is more expensive and that's really good it comes down to usually is, is price. With a TC30 amp and my pedal board, I had already invested at the, at the time I had bought my amp for like 1200 bucks. So 1200 bucks plus my pedal board board itself was like 200 bucks for the pedal train. And then you've got power supply, which is like another 200 bucks or so and then you've got the big sky which is like four five hundred bucks at the time and then all of the other pedals afterwards each one was roughly two hundred dollars you know if you're talking about the keely compressor compressor i mean and all of the other ones i'm, I'm looking at probably close to fifteen hundred dollars to two thousand dollars on just my pedal board plus my amp you're looking at four thousand dollars almost you know after cables and everything else to go and put together so four thousand dollars and then you've got the axe effects which is after you get everything you know expression pedal the fc12 uh, it's still about $4,000. So you, you get all of the pedals versus about seven pedals and a pedal board. And then you have to have good upkeep and a lot of cable management to keep the thing going. Whereas I could just take my Axe FX and plug it into the mixer and play straight out and not have to worry about the sound guy loves me because that's what, that's what it is. So I, I find that pedals are becoming a relic of the past, unless of course, it's a really fantastic pedal and some of the vintage and more like customizable unique ones. And I see a lot of this happening nowadays. The pedal company that really comes to mind when I'm thinking about this is Chase Bliss. If you've never heard of them, I'd, I highly recommend checking them out. Some of the pedals that they create are just absolutely unbelievable. They have preamp pedals with completely mechanized automated knobs and, uh, and faders. It's amazing stuff. You pay the price for it, but these are the types of pedals that you can keep around on your rig and even use them 
additionally with like a, like a model or like Axe Effects or Helix or Kemper. I've heard some good things about the um, the Neural DSP modeler, but the problem I've seen with them is that they overpromised a lot of the features that they haven't quite delivered yet, such as having all of these VSTs and these plugins that you buy online. And they said initially when when they when they were selling it and kind of like hyping it up that you'd be able to bring those VSTs onto this modeler that they've created, and that still has not yet been delivered. I am sure that you can get great sounds out of it, but it's not everything that people wanted when it first was being announced and brought out. So, I mean, still, I still think that Fractal Audio is kind of king of the hill as far as the amount of, you know, just raw, unbelievable tinkering power, whereas everything else is, you know, you've, you still get, you get great sounds out of all of them. However, it's not analog. And the other fact of the matter is, is you still need speakers to use them, right? Or headphones. Of course, I've been using headphones with it for well over two years. It doesn't bother me to, you know, not wear headphones and play. It's nice because I don't have to wake up my neighbors when I'm trying to really jam out. And recording is a breeze. So there, there's a lot of trade-offs, right? One is you have to tinker a lot more to get the sounds that you want. And two is that, you know, recording is a, is a dream, but, you know, of course you don't have that amp in the room sound. So, I mean, you can't feel those physical vibrations as well because a tube amp and the speaker is not the same feeling that you get from an FRFR, um, you know, set of speaker monitors. Pedals are never going to go away. I think that they're going to stick around as long as they have a purpose. But I do think that overall modelers are going to be the future. There's going to be some small form factor pedal, uh, whether or not it has multiple knobs controllable via some other means, um, controllable through your headphones, you know, whatever. It doesn't really matter. It's going to be moving into a smaller form factor, more powerful, more capable, and it's going to be, you know, incredibly useful. It's it's going to be super easy to program what you need done with these modelers. I don't know. I think it sounds like a great time. Sounds like the future to me. But I hope you got something out of this. If you think that this is like wrong, let me know in the comments. I'd like to hear your opinion. What do you think? Where do you think the pedal industry is going to go now that modelers are so powerful? And where do you think the modeling industry is going to go when a great pedal comes out that they just cannot replicate the sound, right? So let me know what you think. Tell me your, uh, give me your input. Let me know in the comments. Really love hearing from you. Um, if you got something out of this, like, subscribe. It really helps me out. It helps me grow this channel. And I'd love to get more content like this out to you guys in the future. So appreciate you guys stopping in. Till next time, I'll catch you all on the flippy floppy, y'all. Ciao for now.